Welcome to Statesboro, Georgia, where football is in the water. Here, there is nothing they love more than the triple option and nothing they hate more than Appalachian State. The best college football rivalry you've never heard of, App State and Georgia Southern. Paulson Stadium is pulsing for a Thursday night of Sun Belt Conference football. 25th ranked Appalachian State against arch rival Georgia Southern. The stakes do not get any higher. And welcome everybody to Statesboro. Doug Sherman along with former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket Roddy Jones. So glad you could join us here tonight to see two teams and two fan bases that Roddy genuinely do not like each other. This is a rivalry that goes back to the old Southern Conference days in 1AA. This is the scene in pregame warm-ups. Guys jawing at each other. You can tell the energy is in the stadium and these two programs legitimately, as you said, do not like each other. There's no question about that. Now, Darrington Evans has stepped into a role for App State of being their feature back out of necessity and Roddy so far he has looked very much the part. He certainly has. Jalen Moore was the starting running back coming into this season but he got injured in the Arkansas State game so Darrington Evans took over from there and I think this guy has a chance to be special. It's this right here that sets him apart. His ability to take it to the house from anywhere and he's an all-purpose back. He can do it running the ball. He can do it in the pass game as well. But he's not just a Ferrari. He's not just a pretty back that can go the distance or catch balls out of the backfield. 26 carries last week for over 100 yards. Meanwhile, the man who makes the Eagles go shy words among the national leaders in rushing touchdowns. He's the leader of this Georgia Southern team. He's their leading rusher. And in this gun option, this is the guy that makes it all go. If App State's going to continue to have success on defense, they're going to have to account for number four on every play. These two teams come into play tonight, tied in the East Division of the Sun Belt Conference, along with Troy, yet to have lost. App State won the toss and deferred, and so Georgia Southern will take over to begin this football game at its own 25-yard line. And there's some of the uh, numbers on Shy Words. 5'11", 190, who has really continued to emerge this year out of Newberry High School. He's completed 59% of his passes, thrown four touchdowns, and zero interceptions. And I'll tell you what, Roddy, one of the big pieces of the puzzle for Georgia Southern is that they just don't turn the football over. Three fumbles lost and zero INT. Which is exactly what you want to hear from an option offense, especially with the rain. Looked like he thought about throwing on first down, and Wirtz slides safely out to the 30-yard line. Georgia Southern doesn't throw the ball a ton, at least on the stat sheet, but it's not for lack of trying. They just like to get Shy Wirtz out on the perimeter and give him the ability to be able to run the ball as well, because that's what makes him dangerous. It's that dual threat ability, and you saw it there. They got him on the edge, decides to tuck it and run for a four-yard gain. Now, Georgia Southern offensive coordinator Bob DeBess earlier this week told us of shy words quote he's a team guy incredibly tough and selfless he is a Georgia Southern guy keep it on the ground out to the 29 yard line it's Wesley Fields one of the co-captains senior from America's Georgia who did not play on Saturday at New Mexico State because of a groin injury but he's given it a go here tonight he certainly is and, and here are the impact players for today number four Clifton Duck is a cornerback He's not going to have a ton of impact on defense today, but he is a beast in special teams, so he's going to have to find a way to make an impact. Anthony Flory, the linebacker. Linebackers are the key to stopping this triple option. He's going to have to fly. And then for Georgia Southern, Wesley Kennedy gives them big playability out of the backfield at that running back position. And number 39, Logan Wright, a big back that's going to be a workhorse today. Yeah, Flory is the only returning starting linebacker from a year ago, and they have done very well as a unit. Wirtz dropped at the 32-yard line by Anthony Flory, the senior from Miramar, Florida, who comes into this game tied with Jordan Fair for most tackles on the team. This App State team specializes in three and outs. They play, as we see this game, they play like the field is tilted towards the offense. They are a downhill attacking offense. You'll see them in the backfield a ton today against this Georgia Southern team. A big third down stop to start this game. Miguel Bauer lead a punt for the Eagles. And the aforementioned Clifton Duck will let it land at about the 43-yard line. And then 
finally come to rest near midfield. That's one way to keep it out of the hands of Clifton Duck, who is dangerous to go the distance every time he touches the football. He certainly is, and Georgia Southern will have wanted a little bit better punt, but that's one of the things that's affected by the weather as well. Only 22 yards on that punt. And there's a look at number 12 for Appalachian State, Zach Thomas, redshirt sophomore from Trustville, Alabama. And Zach Thomas, another dual threat guy. He had a game earlier this year where he was 14 for 14 against Charlotte for almost 300 yards and three TDs. So accuracy is a big plus when you've got Zach Thomas on the center. Yeah, that was back in week two. He threw for 295 yards with flags down and three touchdowns that way again, uh, that day against the Niners. Well, not the way you wanted to start with a penalty against your terrific left tackle, Victor Johnson. Back, yep, it'll be first down and 15. In this first ever play from scrimmage for Appalachian State as a nationally ranked FBS team. On Sunday, the new AP poll came out, and the Mountaineers were number 25. There's Darrington Evans, dropped at the line of scrimmage for no gain by Ty Phillips. Gonna see that a lot. Zach Thomas turning around to hand it to his running back that we featured in the open. He's got great lateral quickness. You saw him there try and get outside to use that speed with Georgia Southern. This is a defense that swarms to the ball. They don't give up big plays. So it'll be a great matchup between them and Darrington Evans. Fake the sweep. He did give it. Corey Sutton. Loss of one on the play. On this side of the football, Roddy, who are the impact players we're looking at? Well, the guy that we've been talking about, Darrington Evans, number one, being the home run threat. Georgia Southern, he, he scares that defense because of his ability to take it to the house. Corey Sutton on the other side. He's averaging 21 yards a reception. And then for Georgia Southern, Logan Hunt, the big defensive end, coming off the edge. And then Joshua Moon, he's an eraser on the back end. He's a downhill linebacker that's going to be asked to pop his head in a lot in the run game. Thomas. Dropped just across the 45-yard line. Didn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. And this defense for Georgia Southern is fired up. Zach Thomas is a little shaken up after this takes a big hit. From number 32, the middle linebacker, Chris Harris. He has struggled to get off the field here. This will be a big loss for App State if he misses any time. You see him there struggling after that big hit. Yeah, Chris Harris Jr., one of the uh, inside linebackers for the Eagles, in on that hit. And so as Thomas is helped off the field, the punt team comes out for Appalachian State. Clayton Howell, redshirt freshman from High Point, North Carolina, averaging about 42 and a half yards per attempt. And keep your eyes on number 12 in blue, Wesley Kennedy III, back deep to receive, standing at his own 10. He's going to let it sail over his head and into the end zone. 53 yards on the punt. No score early here in Statesboro. ESPN Thursday Night College Football, brought to you by Walt Disney World Resort. The folks in Boone, North Carolina, not big fans of the folks here in Statesboro, Georgia. Whenever the Mountaineers get together with the Eagles, and as we went to break, we saw backup quarterback Zach Thomas walks slowly to the locker room for more treatment and there you see his backup number 13 Peyton Derrick a redshirt freshman from Conway South Carolina who may be thrown into the hornet's nest the next time App State gets the football second possession for Georgia Southern works on the keeper saw Zach Thomas with that been taking that big hit from Chris Harris Walking off the field to go get reevaluated and 
I said, that, that would be a big loss from an experience standpoint for this App State team. But right now, Georgia Southern with a good first down play. Shy words up the seam to create a second and short. He gained eight. Got a triple stack behind him now. And this is an App State defense that has been brilliant this year. Give up a first down there, though, on the run by Monteo Garrett. We've already seen a few different formations. Here they go with the old Maryland eye. You motion the tight end out, and a great block on the perimeter by Wesley Fields. One of the underrated things about these backs, these Georgia Southern backs in the triple option, you have to be a great blocker on the perimeter. Everybody's got to be unselfish, because at some point you're going to be asked to make a block for your brother, just like he'll be asked to make a block for you. Great job by Wesley Fields, who was a little questionable coming into this game. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. Wirtz gives it off up the middle fields and the senior from America's Georgia able to pick up four, maybe five tough yards. And Roddy, as we've gotten ready for this game, one of the things you and I've talked about, this App State defense, while the offense is terrific for the Mountaineers, this is a defense that does not give up much. This is the fastest defense that I've seen on film in the entire country this year. This defense flies around. They're not a real big crew, but as you said, they do not give up much at all. They've given up the least number of plays over 20 yards in the entire country, so it's going to be a tall task for Georgia Southern to get any sort of explosive play. Now, App State head coach Scott Satterfield as they run left to Wesley Kennedy, who was shifted to the backfield from the wide receiver position last year to get some of that burst. Able to get out to the 43-yard line, and that's part of the speed on the other side where App State says this is our fastest team ever, says Coach Satterfield, and he says it shows up in all phases. I, I completely agree with him. As I said, this team flies around. They play like the field is tilted toward the, towards the offense. They are absolutely an attacking defense. We saw it there. Wesley Kennedy is a blazer. He can absolutely fly, and he was run out of bounds there by the safety, Josh Thomas. Third down and short. Works the give. He's met by a couple of tacklers. Logan Wright, did he get there? It appears he got a first down. And that's exactly why Logan Wright's in the backfield. The big 225-pound back. Look where he gets hit. He's met in the backfield, but keeps driving his legs, falls forward over the big defensive tackle, Myquan Stout, and gets the first down for Georgia Southern. Well, on the year, Roddy, he's averaging 6.8 yards per carry. You and give him the football, and he is emerging. He continues to, to find another gear. We saw a good push right there. He exploded last week. He's a guy that could really unlock this offense even more than it is. He's got great feet, but that size and his ability to run between the tackles in those short yardage situations is absolutely what sets him apart. Timeout called Georgia Southern. We'll step away. No score. Seven minutes in. Back at Georgia Southern, no score in the showdown for a share of first place in the East Division of the Sun Belt. And we're getting a chance to see the program that Irk Russell built. It was resurrected back in 1981. Paul Johnson, Tim Stowers then created the Flex Bone and won three one AA national championships. Jeff Munkin brought the, uh, brought the option back to Statesboro and then Willie Fritz and Bob DeBess create the spread option. So, Roddy, I have no better partner in the country to be with me tonight to help explain some of this terminology. We say triple option. We see it with the military academies. We see it with your alma mater at Georgia Tech. What are we seeing here tonight out of Georgia South? You're going to see the gun option. They've moved the option back into the shotgun. See Shy Words here making some magic happen. Well, he faked the pass to Obi Fortune, winds up picking up three on the carry. Give him 18 yards now on four carries. Josh Thomas raced to him out of the uh, out the sideline. There's DeBess. And so continue with what you were saying. I, I want to learn about this, this offense here. Well, well Bob DeBess created this with really Willie Fritz at Sam Houston State. He told us that they didn't really know what kind of talent they had back when they created this offense. So they knew they wanted to do some option, but they wanted to create as much misdirection as they could, as much eye candy and motions, crazy things to give the defense to prepare for. So they moved the option back to the shotgun, and the rest was history at Sam Houston. Works with the pitch, bobbled with a flag down. 
Devarius Bartner couldn't handle the pitch. And a little shoving as the pile starts to get up. And that's what you're worried about with the rain and the triple option. The ability to handle the ball on these pitches. Option teams will tell you that it doesn't matter. And it doesn't if you have a dry ball. If you're cycling those balls in. If you're cycling those balls in on a play-by-play -play basis. But when that ball gets a little soaked, it is tough to hold on to when trying to catch that pitch. And both coaches told us this week that they wouldn't be bothered play calling wise with the rain that has been forecast and has Fuck been falling seat. for the last half hour. But they said in terms of changing their game plan, it would be if the wind picked up. That'd be the bigger problem for the team that passes the football. For Georgia Southern, they don't worry so much about the wind. No, they, they certainly don't. I mean, that three-yard pitch isn't going to be affected too much by the wind. But the ability to secure the ball, tuck it, and make a play after is something that you just have to pay a little bit more attention to So we get a big third down here for Georgia Southern. Third down, 14, coming near side. Great pursuit by the Mountaineers, and Wirtz goes down. Chris Willis, the sophomore from Shelby, North Carolina, with a tackle for loss. Well, teams will have always been trying to figure out what gives the triple option problems. Well, it's the same thing that gives every option problem, every offense problems. It's penetration. Look at the big fella just powering his way into the backfield, giving Shy Wirtz nowhere to go, making the big tackle, forcing a Georgia Southern punt. Punt, fair catch called for at the 27 yard line, and App State gets the football back. Saturday on ABC, we'll have the Big 12 battle between number six Texas and Oklahoma State in Stillwater. The Cowboys have won the last three against the Longhorns, four of the last five, six of the last eight. You can see all the action, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and live on the ESPN app. So you can watch it anywhere. Here we've got a new quarterback, number 13, Peyton Derrick, making his fifth appearance of the year for the injured Zach Thomas. Derrick is a perfect 10 for 10 passing on the year for 113 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But Roddy, he has not taken a snap since the month of September. Well, I think we're going to get a steady diet of Darrington Evans going forward. And indeed, they run the football on first down with the redshirt sophomore out of Oak Hill, Florida. Give him five yards on the carry. Now what Peyton Derrick does still give you that you had with Zach Thomas is that dual threat ability. So the zone, the zone read game is still in play. I think Darrington Evans is going to be the guy that you have to feed until Peyton Derrick's able to get his legs under him, especially with the weather being a factor. Well, App State comes in averaging nearly 45 points per game, fifth best in the country. We have a flag down before the snap. But, of course, most of that damage has been done with Zach Thomas. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty. Remains second. Ball start on the right tackle, Chandler Greer, senior from Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, the numbers, no matter how you slice them for this 25th-ranked team in the country, are impressive. Offense, defense, everything tells you this is one of the best, if not the best, group of five team in the country. I think they're the second-best group of five team in the entire country behind UCF and if UCF were to slip up along the way watch out for App State making some noise here's Peyton Derrick's first opportunity to throw the football and his receiver Evans never turned around Evans was covered well out of the backfield you can see they were trying to hit him on that wheel it was very similar to the one that we showed you in the open Trying to get a big play out of your explosive home run hitting running back. And with this third and long, I would anticipate some sort of screen or draw trying to get the ball out of Peyton Derrick's hands quickly and into one of these playmakers' hands so that they can try and make something happen after the catch. A couple of playmakers to the left side. Thomas Hennigan in the slot. Sophomore receiver Malik Williams, another sophomore from Chester, South Carolina. Derrick. Fires, little high, incomplete. He was trying to find Williams. And so the defense for the Eagles forces another punt. 
And Malik Williams had a shot there, but it was tight coverage by Georgia Southern. That was able to knock that ball away. Derek looking calm in the pocket and just a little bit high on that one. When it's wet, you got to put the ball right on his chest. Make it easy for your receiver so he can use that big body to shield the defender. Howell out to punt again. Back to receive is Wesley Kennedy. He can really fly, take the top off of both offense and special teams. And this Georgia Southern coaching staff wants to get the football in his hands as often as possible. On the fair catch, the Eagles will have it at the 31 when we come back. Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern on ESPN Plus. It's Coastal Carolina in Atlanta to take on Georgia State live on ESPN Plus. Start your free trial of ESPN Plus now and watch Sun Belt football all season long. And what a show we've got in the East Division. Three teams, Troy, and then these two here, Georgia Southern and App State, yet to taste defeat in conference play, Roddy. This is a big game in the Eastern part of the Sun Belt. It's exciting for the conference to have a championship game for the first ever season, but anytime Troy plays getting a win yesterday, so App State and Georgia Southern having to chase. Option left, Fields. This App State defense leads the nation in three and outs forced per game, over six per game, and we have seen them do that already. They don't give up much. They're not going to give up chunk yardage either. They're, they're certainly not, and, and this isn't a Georgia Southern offense that's predicated on getting that chunk yardage. They actually told us this week, Bob DeBest told us, the offensive coordinator, that they're looking for more of that chunk yardage. But this is kind of a grinded out offense right now. So they're going to have to stay on schedule. First and 10, second and seven, third and threes. Now they're behind the sticks. Second and 11. And immediately after taking the handoff, Logan Wright was drilled and somehow still got positive yardage. Ball was actually pitched outside after the fake to Logan Wright. My this, goodness. This ball get out on the perimeter. That's what happens with the triple option. It the is. defense is trying to figure out where the ball is going to. And a great job after catching the pitch of making a guy miss, getting up field, and making it third and somewhat manageable. Georgia Southern, not surprisingly, 13 plays from scrimmage so far, all of them running plays. Third down and a long five. Looking to pass for the first time. It's incomplete off the hands of Navarius Bagner, but we've got another penalty marker down in the backfield. And you're going to get a roughing the passer. A late hit on Shy Wirtz. With a great App State stop. It's a Rivalry game, guys getting into it. The offensive line, none too happy about their quarterback taking that shot. Watching the passer with targeting, number 59 defense. That play is under further review. See the ball thrown, and looks like you do get a launch here. Forcible contact to the header neck area. Fair launches into him. You could even say it leads with the crown of the helmet as well. I think this will be on the, uh, the, the the targeting example tape. I think this is going to stand, and that that's going to be the last snap that we see from Jordan Fair. Yeah, I agree with you. The junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, is likely not long for this game. And he is one of two inside linebackers for the Mountaineers who came in with 41 tackles each. A big part of this defense. Yeah, and you see the targeting rule. The upward thrust or severe strike launching. I think you saw that out of this one. Forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player. A passer is that, the defenseless opponent. And a forcible hit by the crown on the helmet. I think it's check, check, and check for Jordan Fair. Now the flip side of it is hope that Shy Wirtz is okay. Because when contact was made, that's as defenseless as you get. He was off the turf and went down hard. And targeting gets a bad rap for a lot of reasons. You know, there's a lot of bang-bang plays, but it's hits like that that 
I'm just trying to get out of this game. This game is violent enough where without the hits to the head, you're you're always got your head on a swivel on the field. And so it looks like we'll get a call here. So as the referee, Marshall Lewis, just told us, indeed, Jordan Fair is out of the football game, and it's good to see Shy Wirtz still in there. And the folks here in Statesboro, well, they like that call. Yeah, they absolutely do. You're getting a starting linebacker who's disqualified from the contest. And these App State coaches will use this as a coaching point. That's a fine time to take a hit. But instead of going up high, just go right through his number. Put your face mask right in Shy Wirtz's number, drive him to the turf. It's a fair hit doesn't result in a first down and it doesn't result in you getting out of the game. Fields and right in the backfield along with Wirtz. And off up the middle, Fields and the senior from Americus, Georgia gets inside the 45-yard line. Those are the first down plays that Georgia Southern needs to stay on schedule. It's good to see Wesley Fields into this game. The coaches told us this week that they weren't quite sure if he was going to be able to go. Had been out nursing a little bit of a groin injury. Hadn't practiced a ton, practiced towards the end of the week. Well, I guess the middle of the week since we're on a Thursday. <laughs> but good to see him in the game as he's, a senior leader. Yeah, he's a young man who can do it all. Good vision, good feet. Honorable mention, all Sun Belt Conference and last year's leading rusher for the Eagles. This year came in with just under 500 yards rushing for 2018. Monteo Garrett driven back to the 48-yard line. Penetration up the middle and the interesting thing about this gun option is that it's a zone principle to the backside unlike other options So the running back has the ability to kind of pick where he's going But that time it was filled by Flory setting up a third down. We haven't yet seen a quarterback draw That's something that Georgia Southern really likes on third down And this is the type of part of the field where they might go for it on fourth down if they can get three or four here And Marco Jackson one of the backup middle linebackers in there with fair ejected and they do the job. Fields. Could not get anywhere near the first down marker. Noel Cook, outside linebacker from Reedsville, North Carolina, with the hit. Chad Lunsford's going to send out his punt unit. I think it's a good call here. You've got App State with their backup quarterback in. So try and tilt the field. So it's hidden yards, that field position game that Georgia Southern's going to play. McGill Bowerly has it blocked. Ball bouncing near midfield. App State, a special teams wonder, has the football. It's Jackson. And the Mountaineers are in business. Eighteen yards on the return. And this is an App State team that is a real menace on specials. Just comes right off the edge, right around that shield. The shield doesn't step out and collision them at all. And App State with their fourth blocked kick of the season. Fantastic job by this special teams. And you talk about hidden yardage on special teams. You're expecting to pin App State deep with a backup quarterback. Right. You get the block kick, and now this this drive starts at the 31 yard line you're right just when you thought the field had flipped the other way here comes the Mountaineers on first down Evans big run still going inside the 20 yard line and perhaps the Mountaineers are starting to get some footing trying to take advantage of that turnover well, Jalen Moore is usually known as the big back but the hole is massive. It's one of the best offensive lines in the country. And then to finish the run, Darrington Evans just lowers the shoulder and punishes this Georgia, this Georgia Southern defense. 14 yards on the pickup. Inside the 20. Going to run it with Evans. Gain a three on the play. Again, Darrington Evans starting again today because Jalen Moore is out with an ankle fracture and a dislocation suffered uh, earlier this month. And we have lined up an interview with Jalen who will join us in the second quarter from the sideline. Get an update on his health and 
get his thoughts on how things have gone here in the first quarter as his offensive mates are knocking on the door. Handed to Evans, cuts it up across the 15 down to the 10, and a flag comes in late. Now penalties continue to be costly. For App State and head coach Scott Satterfield in his sixth year as the head coach at his alma mater. Holding, offense, number 89. Ten yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat second down. Now the clock is showing zeros and that should signify the end of the first quarter and now it appears those on the field have seen that as well. Although time expired because there was an accepted penalty we will have one untimed down. Got to love the untimed down. It's like free football. What was it, Western Kentucky last week where they had oh like my gosh. three or four of them? I couldn't even follow the end of that game. No. Backup quarterback Peyton Derrick in there for the injured Zach Thomas. Young man whose father played tight end at Wofford. Peyton's grandfather, Julius Derrick, played at South Carolina and was drafted back in 1957 as a tight end for the New York Giants. Movement along the line. Might we have some more untimed downs? <laughs> Double free football. Ball start. Offense, number 51. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's Bear Hunter, the right side. Penalty against App State for a total of 40 yards. App State's got to be careful here. Chandler Stanton, the kicker, he's got great range. But they're on they're on the edge of it now. So any more penalties and it's gonna push them out of it in this second and long. They do have at this end of the field the breeze at their back, but presumably if he were to try a field goal coming up and a down, they'd be at the other end of the field. Derek wrapped up at the 30. Lane Acton. Reserve anchor That's linebacker the first quarter. with the tackle. Well, both these defenses have been flexing their muscles. Georgia Southern, 25th ranked Appalachian State. We head to the second quarter. Doug Sherman, Roddy Jones back in a rainy Statesboro, Georgia. No scores. We head to the second quarter. Running back for App State, Jalen Moore. Jalen. You just had surgery a week ago, and yet here you are on the sideline with your guys. How are you doing in the early stages of your rehab? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, everything coming along just fine. Uh, I get a hard cast on soon. And, you know, as soon as I can get that on, that's, that's when the process starts. And then I get that off, and then rocking and rolling again. Well, your backup quarterback, Peyton Derrick, gets intercepted at the goal line. Golden opportunity oh. is snuffed out by Georgia Southern. Daryl Baker Jr., the redshirt sophomore, with the interception, and he returns it 31 yards. Peyton Derrick was trying to hit a post down the middle. Doesn't see the safety come from the opposite side of the field. Throws it into coverage, and it is picked off. It's just inexperienced, not seeing that backside safety shooting across. And a big, big play for this Georgia Southern defense, which has created a turnover now in every single game this year. And so that turnover chain gets a little more work, thanks to the pick by Daryl Baker Jr. And again, Jalen, so uh, not a good way for you to start this interview. 
Oh, no, nah, no, nah, definitely not. We'll bounce back, though. I ain't too worried about it. But what have you seen through the first quarter from your teammates out there? Oh, I see the old line getting dirty. We're getting dirty. You know, that's where it starts with us. You know, we like to hit you straight in the mouth with the run. So, I mean, as long as those bulls, them bulls up front keep pushing, we'll be in good hands. We've got a face mask on App State that's going to move it up even further. But, Jay, I want to ask you about the guy who has taken over for you, Darrington Evans. <laughs> Physically on early in this game. What have you thought about his play since you've been out? Uh, I, I feel like he's done a pretty good job. And like you said, he a home run hitter. So as uh, long as we can get him on the outsides and, you know, get him around those edges, we're in good hands. But uh, I've definitely been talking to him about, you know, uh, the short runs, the two, three-yard runs. And, you know, we all got something to work on. And he definitely going to get that cleaned up. Now, I'm told that your rehab is going to take 8 to 12 weeks. What's next for you as you get yourself 100% healthy again? Oh, just, just big things. Bigger than what you've seen before. You can believe that. Oh, I can believe that. 2017 Sunbelt rushing champion, 2016 Offensive Player of the Year. Thanks so much for joining us, and good luck with that rehab. All uh, right, thank you all. All right, that's Jalen Moore. Out for the rest of the season, but certainly has an NFL future. On the deep ball, the Eagles strike first. Darion Anderson, 57 yards. Georgia Southern takes a 6-0 lead. Doug, how often do we see it? Off of sudden change, going to take a shot. The offense catches the defense. Napping a little bit. They've been running option, option, option. Shy Ward fakes the option and right down the seam. The big fella, Darion Anderson. Well, that was a nine second drive that just a moment ago we were at the other goal line. An interception returned over 30 yards and then the big 57 yard touchdown pass from Shy Words to Darion Anderson. And the folks here in Statesboro, happy up 7-0 early second. ESPN Thursday Night College Football, brought to you by ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Squaring off for years and years at the FCS level, now FBS rivals in the Sun Belt Conference. And it's Georgia Southern striking first for a 7-0 lead early here in the second quarter. And that, by the way, was the third longest Georgia Southern play of the year. The strike from Wirtz to Anderson. Tyler Bass's kick lands out of the end zone. And App State will get the football back trying to get its offense going. But let's take another look at the big play for the Eagles. Now, this is what the triple option does to you. Watch these two safeties. Their eyes are in the backfield. So watch. They're looking in the backfield. The safety actually picks the corner, Tay Hayes, and it frees up Darion Anderson right down the seam. An easy pitch and catch on paper. But watch this. Watch what Shot Words does. Just gets it by the blitzing linebacker, DeMarco Jackson completed and that's the first play all season over 50 yards that this App State defense has given up. The App State offense meanwhile has been going backwards most of the night so far. Penalties have been a problem and so too has the Eagles defense. Marcus Williams runs into a brick wall. The Eagles defense has been keeping this App State offense off balance because of that defensive line. You saw the big play there by Raymond Johnson. This defensive line is the strength of App State's team. They go 240, Raymond Johnson, 290 with Ty Phillips, and 270, Logan Hunt, across the defensive line. They have really controlled this App State offensive line that's really, really good. Fantastic, actually, so far in this game. After a loss of one, run it right up the middle with Williams again. He's still going out to the 45. Not dragged down until the 49-yard line by Kendall Vildor. I think the offensive line heard me talking. <laughs> so, oh, we've been, we've been getting controlled. Okay, they just open up the hole the size of a Mack truck that Marcus Williams runs through. And Doug, I don't really have it much anymore, but I think I could have gotten five or six yards on that one. Oh, you could have gotten at least the 22 that he picked up. Come on, Ronnie. 
biggest play offensively for App State so far tonight. On play action, Peyton Derrick going deep again. He's got a wide open receiver. It's Corey Sutton, who's down to the two yard line. Monquavian Brinson beaten in coverage but made a touchdown saving tackle. Corey Sutton came into this game averaging over 21 yards a catch. And that catch right there is going to extend it even further. Play action gets the safeties to suck up one on the one on the outside and he wins it. The Kansas State transfer gets him inside the five and now trying to push it in. It looks like just short was Williams. They're going to mark him inside the one. Marcus Williams, 5'10", 200-pound sophomore out of Edgecombe High School, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Last year, he lit up Georgia Southern for a career-high 130 yards rushing. He's one of the key backs for half state. Out there again. Henry Pearson is kind of the H-back. And again, the backup quarterback, Peyton Derrick, playing for the injured Zach Thomas. Second and goal. The push at the goal line. App State thinks it's in, but the officials have yet to signal. Touchdown, Mountaineers. Touchdown, Appalachia. Finally figured out that Marcus Williams Jr. had crossed the plane. They needed a second look at that one, but just watch the toughness by Marcus Williams. Stopped up before the goal line, and I think he actually gets a push. He gets a push from his offensive lineman. You saw the defensive lineman of Georgia Southern trying to pull him back a little bit, but ends up across the end zone. And a great answer for App State. After a one-play drive, you come hit a big play of your own and then finish when you get down inside the 10. Yeah, There's a team that runs the football just about as well as anybody in the country. Marcus Williams a part of that with his second rushing touchdown of the year. Point after by Chandler Staten. And a big, quick answer for the 25th ranked team in the country. App State on the board. Marcus Williams for six. The brand new ESPN app. Now with ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now. With Roddy Jones, I'm Doug Sherman here in Statesboro, Georgia, Paulson Stadium for a Thursday night showdown in the Sun Belt Conference. These two teams undefeated in conference play after a defensive first quarter. It's all about the offense here early in the second quarter. I guess the two offenses decided to finally come to the party. So the big play by Georgia Southern. And then App State with a big answer. That's what you do when you're the number 25 team in the country. When you get a big swing taken at you, you take another big swing back, and we'll get some big plays. I'm an offensive guy, Doug, so this is <laughs> this is right up my alley. Well, as the football is teed up by Michael Rubino, you know, these two coaches, as within the coaching community, quite often there are storylines and friendships that go back decades, and that is certainly the case with our two head coaches here tonight, Scott Satterfield for App State and Chad Lunsford for Georgia Southern. Kickoff is taken at the five on the run. Good head of steam. Ball is loose. Picked up by Georgia Southern at the 24-yard line. That's Trey Allen, the inside linebacker on special teams who hopped on that loose football. You saw Wesley Kennedy making his way off the field. He needs to go make his way over to, to his buddy and give him a big hug. He bailed him out. Wesley Kennedy was looking to break that, but just ball security. Low and loose. That's a recipe for getting the ball knocked out. That's why coaches talk about high and tight, mm -hmm. especially on a, on a wet day. Well, 16 years ago, Chad Lunsford and Scott Satterfield were co-workers on the same coaching staff at App State. On first down, gain of maybe three. And so Scott Satterfield along with his wife, Beth, opened up their home to their then colleague, Coach Lunsford, and his newlywed bride, Tippy. And back in 2002, they lived in that basement apartment, separate entrance. It had been newly redone, and 
you know, as far as Coach Satterfield tells it, it's a pretty nice setup he gave for his buddy. Well, if Co the way Coach Lunsford tell it, he was getting gouged in rent. He said <laughs> rent was way too high. <laughs> I think that he would have worked that into his contract a little bit. Well, but. they both agree that uh, they both helped each other finish that basement. And, of course, uh, coaches, especially when they're getting into the industry, aren't making a lot of money, and you got to figure it out. But uh, they remain good friends. They only talk occasionally, I guess, when Coach Lunsford was named the interim head coach midway through last season, and then when he got the permanent head coaching job, both times his old buddy Scott Satterfield reached out and they talked. But uh, in this world of coaching, I mean, these guys, how many, conservatively, how many hours per week in season do these guys put in? A hundred, at least. I mean, you're constantly watching film, and it's tough when you're the coach of a rival to stay in, in, in touch with your friends. On third down and three, going to be a little bit short. Logan Wright, redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Anthony Flory with the stop. This Georgia Southern offense lingered on the field for a little bit. It looked like Chad Lunsford was thinking about going for it, but you're backed up too far in your own end zone. You've already given App State great field position once that they've been able to take advantage of. You don't, want to be, you don't want to have to do that again. Just go ahead and punt it away and let your defense play. Bowerly averages about 40 yards per punt on the year. This is a good one. Driving Duck back to the 20. He bobbles it. Ball's loose. Covered at the 15 down to the 10. Georgia Southern has it. Dexter Carter Jr. comes up with the loose football after Duck let it slip away. At first glance, it looked like he may have been interfered with, but nope, right, got right by him, and this will give us a great look at whether or not he was... Nobody touched him. The ball just goes right through the wickets, and Georgia Southern gets a big, big break here. used to this they've got the best turnover margin in the country we talked in the first quarter Roddy about the fact that the offense doesn't turn it over we didn't talk about that the defense and special teams does a good job of taking it away well in that time it was Dexter Carter that buzzed right by Clifton Duck and you're exactly right this defense has created two turnovers in every game this year except for one special teams included nice cut fields he walks into the end zone untouched from 10 yards out is the second change off second time off sudden change Georgia Southern is able to score you saw the great block up front by Jeremiah Colbert the big offensive tackle opening up that hole and Wesley Fields that might be the easiest touchdown he's had all season I think you could have scored that touchdown. I don't know my, my hamstring wouldn't have held up <laughs> I'll tell you what though the groin that kept Wesley Fields sidelined and had him as a game time decision today certainly looks like he's doing just fine the turnover set up a short field and set up a 10-yard touchdown run. It was a six-second drive. Eagles back on top. Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC, freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence and number two Clemson are in Tallahassee to take on Florida State. The Tigers have won the last three against the Knolls, and Lawrence has thrown 12 TD passes with only two INTs. You can always watch on the ESPN app from anywhere. A big game coming up Saturday at noon in the ACC. Trevor Lawrence gets all the headlines for that Clemson team, but it's, this is Travis Etienne's team now. I mean, Travis Etienne at the running back position has been absolutely fantastic for the Tigers. I'll tell you what, the rain that was forecast that has come really has not held down the crowd too much and certainly has not held down the enthusiasm. Body. So happens when you have a big rival, top 25 matchup. First time in the history of this stadium that a ranked FBS team has come in to play against the Eagles. Well, you like quick and efficient? How about seven and a half seconds 
per scoring drive. And turnovers have been setting them up for the short field. Yeah, the interception led to this big pass down the field. And then it was the fumbled punt. Georgia Southern was able to recover. Wesley Fields goes through a big hole for the touchdown. The Georgia Southern, on those two drives, they're averaging 7.5 seconds on their touchdown drives. <laughs> That's incredible, just how you draw it up. Georgia Southern is feeling it on defense. Darrington Evans, nowhere to run. Logan Hunt, the senior defensive end on the stop. You know, the uh, the points given up so far in this first half, the most given up by the Mountaineers in the first half this season. That's how good this defense has been. They're a team that's hard to get 14 points on at all throughout an entire game. Georgia Southern was able to get it in the first half, but you're Peyton Derrick in this offense. You just have to stay the course. You're fine. Continue to run the ball. Don't try and do too much. Derrick hands it off. Evans dropped for no gain. That's Rashad Bird, the sophomore from North Augusta, South Carolina, who's coming back from a hip flexor injury. He was going to be a game time decision after missing the last three football games for the Eagles. Yeah, he and Chris Harris, who we saw earlier, are going to split time today, but this Georgia Southern defense is really feeling it. This is not typically a pressure team. They typically drop numbers back Number on third down. Leaving the game for an equipment violation. That's a big loss on this play for Georgia Southern. The big defensive end, Logan Hunt, having to exit the game. So Quan Griffin, the sophomore from Glen Mary, Florida. Glen St. Mary, Florida is into the game. After being flushed from the pocket, the pass from Derrick, a little out in front of Evans, incomplete to Marcio Reese with the pressure. Georgia Southern was able to get pressure with four there. They were able to force Peyton Derrick feel a little uncomfortable. They dropped numbers back. There was nowhere to go with the football. And Darrington Evans has been averaging nearly 120 yards rushing in conference games this year. And Roddy so far tonight, he's been held to 21. Fair catch. Wesley Kennedy the third. And at this point, it's just about securing that football. He gets it at the 45-yard line after a 31-yard punt. It's one of the storylines in that first quarter. Starting quarterback Zach Thomas knocked out for the Mountaineers. And so Peyton Derrick has come in and done a good job. He did throw one interception, but he has been at the helm for two touchdowns. Yeah, he's not the reason that this App State offense has struggled. It's the fact that they haven't been able to run the ball. They're going to have to help out the young quarterback. As so we see Georgia Southern taking the field here, looking to extend this lead. They've been great off sudden change. They've kind of stymied or stalled on all the other possessions. Let's see if they can get something going. Shy works. Keeps across midfield. Big gainer for the Eagles. Wasn't stopped until Josh Thomas made the tackle a 22 yard run. Well, this App State defense had only given up two runs over 20 yards the entire season coming into this game already. Georgia Southern has a 50-yard touchdown and a 20-yard run right there. Shy Wirtz on the triple option, hitting it in the seam. You saw nobody taking the quarterback, and when you don't, number four is going to make you pay. Darion Anderson goes wide right. He had a big, long touchdown reception earlier in the quarter. Again, it's Shy Works to the 20 yard line. Austin Exford with the tackle, and suddenly this App State defense has given up some big plays. When you see the quarterback having success in the triple option, it means that the linebackers are being taken care of. You see the two linebackers there trailing the play. Georgia Southern's doing a great job of keeping Flory and Jackson off balance, and that's why Wirtz is having a lot of success on this drive. was leveled immediately. Did a good job just to secure the football because Ocon Godwin was all over him. That's what we in the triple option game call an up stunt. He looks like he's going to take the back. He quickly comes off of it and goes and gets the quarterback. It's one of the hardest things for an option quarterback to decipher, especially when the guy's not touched at the line of scrimmage. 
Ocon Godwin did a great job there, stepping into the back, but then getting up onto the quarterback and creating a situation where Georgia Southern now has second and 15. When you're trying to defend this triple option, who's got it the toughest? The D linemen, the linebackers, or the defensive backs? Well, they've all got it tough. You've got to play, <laughs> you've got to play uh, option sound ball, fundamentally sound ball on every single play. Well, they certainly did there, Monteo Garrett. Dropped at the 25-yard line. That'll bring up third down and about 15. So I want I want to continue on that, Doug, because the reason everybody's got it tough, maybe the interior defensive linemen not so much, but the on the edges, those defensive linemen have to be able to not only play the the dive, but they've got to be able to react if it's any other play, because every play is not a triple option. The linebackers have to have their eyes into the backfield, sort out what's going on, and avoid those blocks that a lot of times are coming low. Then the defensive backs have to be aware for play action on every single play. Georgia Southern, one of five on third down so far tonight. This is third and long for Wirtz. And the App State defense pushing back. Austin Exford, Hakeem Davis Gaither among those on the tackle. So what do you do here from the 25 yard line? It appears that Tyler Bass is going to come out and attempt the field goal. It'll be about a 42 yarder. As long as a 48 yarder. This is a young man second team all Sunbelt Conference a year ago. And this year he is a perfect nine for nine. Actually he had a 50 yarder against UMass earlier this year. It's up on its way plenty of distance and it's good. The 14th field goal of 40 or more yards for Tyler Bass and Georgia Southern stretches its lead to 10. Another one of the neat traditions here in Statesboro is the yellow school buses that are the way the team gets to the stadium. They date back to 1981 and the students line up and spray beer. They spray champagne as they come through campus to the stadium. And again, these buses, when this program was brought back to life in 81, didn't have much money. And so they had to get themselves from place to place, and they were able to buy yellow school buses that now, what, 37 years yeah. later, they're not taking on the long trips, but they're still able to come to their home games and have a little fun. Well, Doug, I walked the field pregame, and I was walking around these players. I thought I smelled a little hint of alcohol. I was kind of <laughs> wondering why, but now we know, and it's helping these guys play loose. Well, I'll tell you what, Roddy, I came through campus just before the buses, and I saw that group of kids lined up, and I wasn't 100% sure what they were doing. I'm just glad they didn't spray you. I'm glad they didn't spray me. Oh, it's a rental car. I would have been okay, but uh, I had my windows up. But it's, uh, it's just one of the neat traditions. We saw the eagle that has been part of the pregame tradition here. And everybody comes out when it's Appalachian State in town, the arch rival from Boone, North Carolina. And Georgia Southern has the 25th ranked team in the country down 10 and down to their second string quarterback, Peyton Derrick. Well, they had success, Peyton Derrick. That one pass for 50 yards was off of play action. First downs. Coming out on a drive, you've had a chance to talk about it. Not a bad time to do another one. Handed off to the first man through. Georgia Southern defensively doesn't let Marcus Williams get any sort of traction. Maybe he picked up one. Looks like this Georgia Southern defense has really started to pin their ears back with the backup quarterback. Those defensive linemen. A nice little battle going back and forth. This offensive line for App State is part of the Joe Moore Award midseason mm -hmm. recognition for the best offensive line in the country, but they've got their hands full with this Georgia Southern defense. Yeah, they only allowed nine sacks on the year coming in. Derrick with a clean pocket, pumps. Now checks down and throws a low ball. Couldn't be handled by Thomas Hennigan, who comes into this game as the top receiver 15 catches 165 yards for the Mountaineers he's still looking for his first reception tonight well he was looking initially Peyton Derrick was looking for his big tight end down the seam Georgia Southern that second down play expecting play action were able to cover Reed Derrick did a pretty good job of getting outside the pocket got the defender to commit couldn't quite make the throw and now it's a third and long situation and if I'm App State I'm getting the ball in the hands of Darrington Evans that's number three in white. Mark 
Marcus Williams, though, the running back on this play with Derrick. He goes out into the pass route, going deep down the right sideline. Corey Sutton couldn't get there. Going with him stride for stride was Jesse Liptron. Back up strong safety. That's a pretty big assignment. Corey Sutton is a Kansas State transfer, stands 6'3", 205 pounds. And for Liptrot, he was given up three inches and about 30 pounds. But great coverage, and the ball was just a little bit overthrown. Georgia Southern will live with that all day long, letting them throw those deep balls, low percentage throws. And they're able to force another punt. Another three and out for App State. Clayton Howell gets it away. And the fair catch made at the 34-yard line by Kennedy. Sports Center tonight after Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech on ESPN with Bucci and Kenny. They'll have Dolphins, Texans updates and reactions from Keyshawn when it goes final. Plus, how Florida can take down Georgia Saturday in Jacksonville. And Tim Legler on OKC's slow start with the Thunder taking on the Celtics tonight. Sports Center tonight after college football on ESPN and the ESPN. App. Outside, receiving team number 42. That penalty the score is in Blacksburg is 21-21. My, uh, my texts are going crazy. I'm in a group text with some of my ex-teammates. And the offensive production out of that Georgia Tech-Virginia Tech game is apparently incredible because <laughs> it seems like every other text is yes, no, yes, no. Somebody scoring at a mile at a crazy pace up there in Blacksburg. Seventeen seven Georgia Southern with a lead over App State. The Eagles get the football back first down on their own thirty four yard line. Wirtz keeps the play alive flag down behind him as he gets to the forty five yard line. And now more flags come out. An eleven yard pickup and let's see if it'll stand. Fortune, the uh, redshirt junior wide receiver for Georgia Southern, keeps pointing at App State. He thinks it's there against them. Two on the play. One occurred during the play. One afterwards. Holding offense number 75. That 10-yard penalty is set from the previous spot. After the play, personal foul. Defense number 97. 15 yards will be assessed from that spot. First down. So the personal foul against Caleb Sperlin. And a penalty against the Eagles on their center, Curtis Rainey. See the hole there, the center of your screen by number 75. Watch 97. Shy Wirtz is on the ground. Yep, can't do that. He's hitting a guy in the back. It it's, doesn't look too bad, but if it's after the play to the back of a player, referees are going to flag that every time. And Roddy, that's why Obi Fortune knew that the penalty was going to be on the other side because he's the one who got shoved <laughs> by big number. 75. First and 10 at the 39. Logan Wright pushed back the redshirt freshman from Jacksonville. Didn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Flory, the second year starter at linebacker. First team all Sun Belt Conference in the preseason. And again, one of the real key cogs. And again, App State is playing without Jordan Fair, who was ejected for targeting back in the first quarter. So DeMarco Jackson, the backup middle linebacker, getting many more reps here tonight. Here comes that triple option of the Eagles. Wirtz with the pitch to Garrett. App State was ready. And we've got extracurriculars again. Clifton Duck. And it looks like Darion Anderson. Those two got tangled up after the play. It was an unassuming flag thrown by the referee. Just kind of pulled it out and dropped it on the turf. 
But there was a flag thrown. It'd be interesting to see who that's on. This is on. It's Clifton Duck. Had the initial slam, but there was a push at the end of the play. So let's see which way the refs call this. Don't they say they never get the guy who starts it, they get the guy who reacts to it? There are two fouls on each team after the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 81. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number four. Both players have one unsportsmanlike conduct for the game. Those penalties cancel. It is third down, the down counts. And that might seem like it's not a big deal because the penalty is offset. Watch at the bottom of your screen what happens. You see the body slam comes from Clifton Duck. And then Darion Anderson gets up and pushes. That might not seem like a big deal, but we've seen it a couple of times this year. In these rivalry games where it gets a little heated, two guys get into a scuffle. They have their first unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. And then the bench gets an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, which would eject those guys. So that is not an insignificant penalty. Charge timeout, Appalachian State, their first of the half. App State this uses its first timeout, and as we've been talking about, Coach Satterfield and his Mountaineers do not like the Eagles. And it's not a personal thing so much, it's just these two football teams have such a great rivalry. And when we talked to, to Scott Satterfield earlier in the week, he said, Look, we're pretty new to the Sun Belt. There's one team that we know really well, and it's Georgia Southern. Going back to their Southern Conference days, back when there were national championships and number one rankings on the line, that'll breed some bad blood. No doubt. They see this is the 34th meeting, but uh, most of that was done at the 1AA or FCS level. And these were two national power programs at that level. I mean, national championships between them, they won nine titles. And so they have to go through each other, either for a 1AA championship, FCS championship, or now a Sun Belt Division championship. Shywertz, the redshirt sophomore quarterback from Clinton, South Carolina. In the backfield with Montana, uh, Monteo Garrett. Wirtz being chased by Willis and just throws it away. It was not a heavy rush by App State on that play. They actually dropped numbers back and were able to get pressure with three, which is something that they've been really good at. Not a ton of sacks, but they do get a ton of pressure. You see there Chris Willis fired up after forcing that third down and completion. Now perhaps App State will get another big play on special teams. We talked about that they have now blocked four kicks and punts this year. They've also had four special teams touchdowns, including one by the man Thomas Hennigan, who lets it bounce and is covered at the 21-yard line. So no return that time after the 38-yard punt. Take a look at our game trends. Zach Thomas injured on the first drive and out indefinitely. A couple of turnovers, a lot of penalties have been a problem for the Mountaineers. And as we talked about, Georgia Southern, Roddy, has taken advantage of those turnovers and done it very quickly and on a couple of occasions. The two one-play drives off of those turnovers. And the other long drive resulted in a field goal. The trend is if App State stays away from the turnovers and make Georgia Southern earn it, this defense is good enough to keep them in the game. Evans in motion, out wide right. Flush from the pocket, changes hands with the football. Nice run by the backup quarterback from Conway, South Carolina. Derek tackled by Moon after picking up 13. Got another penalty in the backfield. We have seen a lot of dirty laundry, as you said, especially against this App State offense. Holding offense, number 75. Ten yard penalty remains first down. And again, that's Victor Johnson, a junior from North Augusta, South Carolina, who uh, pro scouts know who he is. 6'5", 296. He's got NFL measurables, first team all conference, but this is not the first time he's been called for holding tonight. Yeah, when that defensive player tries to disengage, especially when the quarterback's pass, that's a dead giveaway. When he's trying to pull away and sprint down the field and he can't, he's attached to that offensive lineman like Velcro. Probably something going on there, and Victor Johnson gets flagged for it. Eighth penalty, Roddy, for 80 yards against App State. 
And this App State team had only averaged six a game coming into coming into this game. It's in the bottom half of the Sun Belt, but that's not terrible. Penalties have really killed them today. Do you think at all being ranked for the first time at this level in program history has anything to do with the struggles we've seen out of App State here tonight? There's a few things going on. That might be part of it. You're on the road in a hostile environment. There's a lot of energy, a lot of animosity, but also you're coming off a short week. These teams played on Saturday, so you weren't able to go through the regular week of practice, and you may be a little fatigued, and when fatigue happens, penalties happen. You watch number 78, Chandler Greer. That would be great if he was meeting his brother on the street, giving him a big bear <laughs> hug, but you've got the defensive end hitting the splits because you've got him wrapped up. Holding offense, number 78. Half the distance to the goal line remains first down. And it's really hard to get away with that when you're attacking. Oh, yeah. And those guys are out in space. Yeah. They're massive. Yep. And th this offense just has to settle down. This offensive line has really powered them for much of the year. You get back-to-back -back penalties. That have, forced, that have forced App State back inside their own 10. They just have to settle down, use their technique. There's no reason for your arms to ever be that wide when you're a tackle. Keep them inside. App State fourth in the country coming in at 6.3 yards per carry. Not even close to that here tonight. Georgia Southern continues to lay the lumber. Georgia Raymond Southern. Johnson the third, excuse me, Rob. Timeout, Georgia Southern. They're second of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Georgia Southern very wisely takes a timeout here. They'll continue to use those as they'll ha likely have great field position if they can force a punt. With 112 left and one other timeout, you're looking at getting the ball back with around 30 seconds, which is plenty of time when you're going to be around the 50-yard line if you're able to hold them. And there you see Troy already picked up its fourth league win earlier this week, a Tuesday night game. So the winner of this will keep pace with Troy in that battle for the Sun Belt East. And again, for the first time in conference history, there is a postseason championship game to be played December 1st, and it'll be played at the highest remaining seed. And so there is a lot. The East Division clearly is the dominant division at this point over the West Division. So you got to figure the championship game is either going to be played here in Troy, Alabama, or in Boone, North Carolina. Which is a big advantage. All of those towns turn out for their for their programs. And this is a, it's a great stage for the Sun Belt to be on. It's going to be at 12 o'clock on that Saturday right out of college game day. Pretty so cool. it's going to be exciting. Maybe we could uh, tell the guys back in Bristol they should take college game day to wherever there the Sun Belt Championship is. Plenty of time to pass, but Derek way off the mark trying to find Evans. I do not like that call if you're App State. I get that you're trying to get the yardage, but an incomplete pass stops the clock. Now Georgia Southern has their last time out, so instead of getting the ball back with only 30 seconds, if they stop a run play here and call a timeout, they're going to get the ball back with nearly a minute. So a big difference. And I think that's a big miss for this App State offense. That's our App State offensive staff. I do not like the call to throw the ball away. On third down in a mile. Just running it to choose some clock, the safe move, give him some room to be able to punt. And now generally, I would say, Roddy, a triple option team needs a little time more time to be Georgia able to Southern. score, but the way they the have scored tonight, hey, as long half. as they've got it seven seconds, second they can go the distance. I know. They have been a quick strike offense as Georgia Southern takes their third and final timeout, as we expected. Now, when they get the ball back, you're going to have to work the sidelines. But if I'm Georgia Southern, I may take a shot on this first play when they get the ball back. Just let's, let's go downfield. Let's see if, if App State can make a play. If not, tell Shy Words, hey, take off, get out of bounds. And that's one of the great things that defenses against the triple option have to worry about because Shy Words last week only threw the football four times, but he completed all four passes. And the surprise element is a huge part of it that the defense sells out to stop the triple option, and whoop, once in a while you go over the top and catch him napping. And that's a, that's a great point by you, because 
uh, actually can happen in reverse in a two-minute situation. They're going to think that, that Georgia Southern is going to come out throwing the ball, but if you don't have numbers, if you're not option sound, there's always the option, no pun intended, to run the ball on the perimeter. Powell from his own seven gets it away. Giving ground is Kennedy. And at the 33-yard line, Georgia Southern gets it with 53 seconds on the clock. A very good 48-yard punt to make the field a little bit longer for the Eagles. Oh, we're not even to halftime, Rowdy. And App State has tied its season high with 10 penalties. They had 10 in their terrific overtime loss at Penn State. And then here in their second biggest game of the year, the same problem is cropping up. I think you can uh, be assured that Scott Satterfield is going to address that at halftime. It has absolutely killed this team. Wesley Fields, Wesley Kennedy the third in the backfield along with Shy Wirtz. Little freeze option look, throwing long into single coverage. No flags down. There's the coverage that we expect out of Clifton Duck. Not allowing Wesley Fields to get free. I like Georgia Southern coming out and taking a shot. Not sure that I'd have taken a shot on that guy. I mean, Clifton <laughs> Duck has been absolutely fantastic over the course of his career. And if you're shy words, all the safeties that cleared out of the field, you had a ton of room to work with. If you throw that ball more towards the middle of the field, gives your receiver a lot more room to work with to go and catch it and run under it. But as is, you're all right. Now you just get back into your two-minute offense and you try and pick up some yardage. And that was Darion Anderson they tried to find deep. Run it up the middle. Logan Wright. Clock continues to run down to 35 seconds left in the half. Doesn't look like Georgia Southern's in a big hurry. They want to make sure if they do not get this third down, App State's not going to have enough time to get together a drive. As they've got two timeouts of their own remaining and Eagles may just take this one to halftime. Sure looks that way. You're Georgia Southern. You have to be extremely pleased with the way this first half has gone, creating the turnovers, and not just that, but being able to capitalize off of them has shot works in this offense ahead at half. The 25th ranked team in the country has not been behind much at all this year. How will they respond against their arch rival in the second half here in Statesboro? The Georgia Southern Eagles making their arch rival make mistakes and capitalizing on every single one of them so far. We're at halftime. Here, Colson. Zach Thomas has been ruled out for the second half, so it's Peyton Derrick's game to win or lose for Appalachian State. And welcome back, everybody, to Statesboro. Roddy Jones, Doug Sherman, glad you could be here with us with the 25th-ranked team in the country losing its starting quarterback on the opening drive and now having to come back from double digits down. It's been a tough half for App State. The penalties have really killed them, turnovers, and then it makes it even tougher when you have your backup, Peyton Derrick, who's got the keys to the car. Hey, they're going to have to get something going because this Georgia Southern offense has really been rolling it in times. Okay, let's show you the highlights from that first half and show you how we got to 17-7 with the Eagles on top. Well, first, here's the injury. Chris Harris coming in with the big hit on Zach Thomas. That's the one that knocked him out. But really, the story of this game has been sudden change, turnovers, and then Georgia Southern being able to capitalize. First, Peyton Derrick comes into the game, throws the big interception. And Georgia Southern, first play after this, a nine-play drive, a big strike down the field to Darian Anderson. And then it was a muffed punt. After that, Wesley Fields gets the handoff into the end zone. 14 points off of two turnovers for Georgia Southern. Plus the title of 42-yard field goal. And there you go, 17-7. to The other big story for App State, penalties. Those 10 ties their season high that they had week one at Penn State in the game they lost to the Nittany Lions in overtime. You know what? Down only 10 if App State can clean that up and get better production from the quarterback. Peyton Derrick only one of eight passing in that first half. We could have ourselves a football game. Georgia Southern will kick off to begin this third quarter. And that's going to be brought out. 
Flag down. Evans out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And when you're Darrington Evans, it doesn't matter if you're five yards deep in the end zone. You bring it out and you take off, and it's going to give this App State offense great field position. It was actually one of those shoes or maybe the belts or a glove that we saw fly off. You're right. Flag. With all that gold out there on the gloves and the shoes and the towels, it was not a penalty marker. So first down from the 36-yard line, and can Appalachian State and Darrington Evans get its vaunted run game going? This is a team that came in fourth in the country at 6.3 yards per carry. And Roddy in that first half, Nothing close to that in terms of running the ball. They kept running into uh, Eagles defenders pretty much every time they took the handoff. Well, they were second in the Sun Belt in total rush yards or total yards per game at 265. Only 66 yards in the first half rushing. This Georgia Southern defense has been fantastic at the point of attack. The defensive line has really controlled the game. Down goes Derek. It's the nose tackle, Ty Phillips. Now with two and a half sacks on the year. Just watch this. It's a four-man rush. A great swim move off the line by Ty Phillips. Showing the big man showing that he can do a little pass rush as well. And it sets up a third and long. And for App State, if you're an App State fan that saw the first half, this is looking a lot like that did, being behind the chains in a third and long. And you talked about it in the first half, Roddy. This front line for Georgia Southern of Johnson, Phillips, and Hunt has been outstanding. Pocket collapses again. Derek on the run, takes a shot, takes another shot, and gets out of bounds. With the way Georgia Southern plays, particularly on third and long, they drop numbers deep. And that does two things. One, it clogs up the lane for the quarterback to throw it in. But two, because they're in zone, all eyes are on the quarterback. So when he escapes the pocket and is looking to run, you have numerous guys there to meet him. So even if you make the first guy miss, there's always partners behind him to rally and make the tackle. App State is yet to convert on third down tonight. 0 for 7. That brings the punt team back onto the field. Clayton Howell. From his 25. Driving Kennedy back. And he gets leveled at the 12. Well, this with App State this week is the second time in Sunbelt Conference history that one of their own has been ranked. Two years ago, Troy ranked 25th. Wound up taking on Arkansas State. Again, a Thursday night nationally televised game. And, well, it didn't go very well for the team that was ranked. Arkansas State took care of Troy. 35 to 3 that night coming into this one Roddy clearly App State didn't like those parallels But here early in the third quarter that parallel can be made weird things happen on Thursday nights in the fun belt and things are happening here tonight <laughs> App State's defense doesn't allow Wesley Fields any room to run Mike Juan Stout one of the co-captains a stout nose tackle with the hit this App State defense has been pretty good. They held Georgia Southern to 92 yards in the first half, but it's the big plays that really have gotten this Georgia Southern team going. The big 50-plus yard pass down the field. Shai Wirtz has had a couple of big runs. But they've made it really tough for Georgia Southern to, to grind it out. After a loss of one. And again, the big boys up front for the Mountaineers. Doing the job, keeping Shai Wirtz from getting loose. Desmond Franklin coming up from his free safety position. And you know, we mentioned Mike Juan Stout with that tackle two plays ago. His defensive coordinator, Brian Brown, told us a terrific story this week about that Mike Juan is, is the bell cow and the leader of the defense, sure. But he is a guy who lost his mom at a very young age. His dad wasn't around, bounced from house to house, grew up young. And he is such a good person and such a good student at App State. He's a student teacher at a local elementary school. On the give, it's Fields getting loose across the 30, still on his feet. Breaking tackles to the 45 and out to midfield. <laughs> 33 yards on the carry. 
The coaches told us that he was questionable, but uh, that groin looks just fine. It was a massive hole off, off, open by this offensive line. And then this is all Wesley Fields making guys miss down the field. See the broken tackle there. Josh Thomas is no match. He got loose in the secondary in a big third down. Only the second third down converted by this Georgia Southern offense. He's now picked up 60 yards on 11 carries from scrimmage. First and 10 at the 50. Triple option near side. Works picks up two. And just to finish up that story on Myquan Stout. He's a student teacher at a local elementary school in Boone. And he is the phys ed student coach for the defensive coordinator's daughter, L. She's in kindergarten at uh, Valley Crucis Elementary, and she doesn't even realize that uh, Mr. Stout is a football player for her dad's team. He just thinks, well, he's coach. And Mike Quan Stout has really had a tremendous run in his five years in Boone. On second down. Big gainer for Wirtz, and nobody's going to catch it. 47 yards to the house. For Georgia Southern today, it has largely been the big play to get them in the end zone. Typically off sudden change, but a great third down call to run the ball. Wesley Field gets them down into App State territory, and then shy words, you give him a seam, and you can just strike up the band, because that guy can absolutely fly. Forty-seven yards on the touchdown. A five-play, 85-yard drive so far, all Eagles. Georgia Southern sophomore quarterback Shy Words, 11 carries, 99 yards, including the big game breaker a moment ago, 47 yards to the house, Roddy. Now I want you to look at two people. Look at this safety right here and what the option action does to him, and then the block on this linebacker. That safety, this is a called quarterback run, but he's got to go take the pitch. You get a great block by Logan Wright on that linebacker, then there's nobody left. Shy Words only has to outrun the backside corner, and I'll take Shy Words on that any day of the week. And remember, coming into the game he had eight rushing touchdowns in the on the uh, the year rather nine on the year that was eighth best in the country so that is his 10th rushing touchdown already this year and for shy words and his family in Clinton South Carolina it has been a challenging last few months because the family home was lost to a July grease fire. Good news was everybody's okay, but it was a total loss. And so Eagle Nation here in Statesboro, through an NCAA approved GoFundMe page, raised a lot of money to help get Shy and his family back on their feet. It's incredible the way Eagle Nation, the way this Georgia Southern family has put their arms around Shy Wirtz. And for him to come out and play when you've got so much going on outside, off the field, and play at the level he has, it's absolutely incredible. Much better pass thrown there by Peyton Derrick, finding Thomas Hennigan. Brinson in the coverage, and uh, again, Derrick coming off the bench when Zach Thomas went down with injury, had the 150-yard pass in that first half, Roddy, but several of his other passes were way off the mark. That was a well-thrown football. You're exactly right, and, and I think the coaches wanted to come out, get him an easy throw, just tell him, hey, look, this is a rhythm throw. Rock put it on his numbers. Maybe that'll give him a little confidence. And he's got wide receivers he should be able to trust. On the give, Williams. They'll mark him down at about the 31-yard line, a yard shy of the marker. Von Griffin, the tackle. But Thomas Hennigan, Dominique Heath, Malik Williams, and Corey Sutton are all viable wide receivers who, by and large, along with the quarterbacks, have been held in check so far tonight. Well, I think a lot of that has to do with the quarterback position and, and what you've gotten out of Peyton Derrick, but also he hasn't had a ton of time to throw. This Georgia Southern defensive line has been in his face all game long. Johnson, Phillips, and Hunt, 92, 96, and 9. The big boys in blue up front. And again, with the help from their linebackers, 
Not giving up much. It's a great job of Marcus Williams making a guy miss in the backfield. Randy Wade basically was unblocked off the edge. Was able to slip by him and get just enough for the first down. That is the first third down conversion of the game for App State. As a team, they average 265 yards rushing per game. Back to the ground they go. Williams moves the pile out to the 38. That'll bring up second down and five. Ian Bush, back up nose tackle from Port Charlotte, Florida, in on the stop. That's more what it should like for this Georgia, excuse me, for this App State offensive line. They've given up a lot of penetration. You've got to tip your hat to the Georgia Southern defensive line for that. But when they're able to seal it off, this is a zone running team. Penetration absolutely kills it, particularly if it comes from the front side, because that back side is not where a back wants to go. Derek, time to throw. Down the right sideline into single coverage. It's incomplete. Trying to find Corey Sutton, the K-State transfer, but he was well covered. Looks like Monquavian Brinson on the coverage there. A good no call. Both guys engage physical play down the field. Corey Sutton, 6'3", 205-pound receiver. You see him trying to lean back in. And that one, that, that's kind of indicative of how they've been playing. That, that could have been called. You saw that hand by Brinson come in, but as it stands, it's third and long. You're going to get a little check with me. As they try and figure out the right call to get this third down. Derek. Gonna run for it. And he's got a first down out to midfield. His helmet, or somebody's, no, it's the football that came out, excuse me, to Marcio Reese with the tackle from behind, but not until he picked up 12. The thing I like most about this is watch how decisive Peyton Derrick is. First read's not there, second read's not there. Let's take off. Is able to run away from Tamarcio Reese, the linebacker, and pick up the first down. Peyton Derrick had not taken a snap in over a month, but the injury to Zach Thomas on the first possession of the game for the Mountaineers has pressed him into service. There's another strike thrown to his tight end, Colin Reed. Reed, a first-team all-Sunbelt Conference performer, his first catch of the night. This is the benefit when you have a big tight end. This is something that you see in the NFL all the time. You play fake, throw a dig right behind it to your tight end, one of the easiest throws a quarterback can make if those linebackers are biting. Scott Satterfield seems to have gotten in a little bit of a rhythm with this young quarterback, and the quarterback has responded with some great throws. Yeah, Reed is on the John Mackey Award watch list that will go to the best tight end in the country. This time, the pass a little high, and it's intercepted. Kendrick Duncan Jr. with the takeaway, and it's another big mistake made by the Mountaineers. It's tough. He tried to go to the big tight end one more time. Colin Reed just wasn't able to haul it in. This throw was a little bit high. But as Georgia Southern is going to take over, they're up 24-7. The team that leads the nation in turnover margin with yet another takeaway. The College Football Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. Saturday on ABC, we'll have the Big 12 battle between number six Texas and Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have won the last three against the Longhorns. You can see at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and live on the ESPN app. So you can watch anywhere. Have you seen the jerseys that Oklahoma State's going to wear for this game on Saturday night? What do they look like? It's the 1988 throwback jerseys commemorating Barry Sanders' high nice. trophy season. It's, it's going to win jersey of the year. I mean, nice. that is incredible. I like it. Best season in college football history. Really? That's a strong statement. Georgia Southern. 15 yards on first down. Logan Wright. Logan Wright had 136 yards in the last game. And with the, the offensive line working the way it is, I think any of these backs could get 136 yards. But... This Georgia Southern offense does such a good job of keeping these guys fresh and rotating them through. It seems like you got fresh legs coming at you constantly. App 
State was ready on that one. Matt LaRoche nowhere to run. Make that Logan Wright rather on the carry. Redshirt freshman from Venice, Florida. And that's Noel Cook, outside linebacker, who made the tackle for a loss of one. Quarterback Shy works. Pitches it off. Garrett. Give him five on the carry. Anthony Flory with the tackle. This is the biggest third down of the game here for App State's defense. For this App State team, Georgia Southern's able to put a drive together and go up by even more, 27 to 7, or even possibly 31 to 7. I think you can pretty much stick a fork in this App State team. This is a huge drive. It's going to be really tough for them to come back. They don't get a stop on this drive. On third down, Wirtz calls his own number. He's got a first down and much more. Finally dragged down from behind at the 30-yard line. He picks up 28 yards, a huge opportunity to move the chains here. This offense coming into this game was the worst offense in the Sun Belt Conference in plays over 20 yards, those explosive plays. But they have been all over it here today. We see Shy Words here again showing the balance and the speed, and he almost gets out of this. He almost turns on the burners and is able to run away from this entire App State defense. This was a big matchup. Was Georgia Southern going to be able to create those explosive plays? And they absolutely have. Well, when Chad Lunsford took over this Georgia Southern program, he said to his players, quote, let's make football fun again. And, you know, it sounds so simple, Roddy, but a year ago, this team fired its head coach, won only two games the entire year, and they are on their way already to their seventh win this year. Six and one coming in already, bowl eligible. I would say Coach Lunsford and his guys have made it fun once again. And they went back to their roots. They went back to the option on the offensive side of the football. This Georgia Southern team, it, it seems like they get a little extra boost if they have the ability to run the option. This is a Georgia Southern team that's basically defined by that style of offense. Well, it's been quite a turnaround here in Statesboro. Works. Ball came loose as he got body slammed. Looked like Brian Miller was the one who covered that fumble. So that'll bring up third down and seven. And, and check this out. Uh, when Georgia Southern is running the option, when they have coaches that run the option offense, win percentage of 720. When they don't run the option, 365. This is a, an, an offensive identity that this program has that's been ingrained since Kirk Russell restarted the program. Right. It, uh, started in 1981 and now nearly four decades later it's proven out by those numbers that this school, this town, this community, it's all about running the triple option. And, and it obviously doesn't matter what type of triple option you, you run. See the Irk Russell statue. He brought in Paul Johnson and Tim Stowers to run it in 85. They win a national championship. Stowers takes over. They win a national championship in 1990. Paul Johnson wins two in the late 90s. Jeff Munkin comes and reinstitutes it. They go to semifinals. And then Willie Fritz and Bob DeBess running it again. Tyler Bass lined up for a 43-yard field goal attempt. Plenty of distance. And it is good. Well, the all-conference redshirt junior kicker out of Irmo, Irmo, South Carolina, just keeps getting it done. The lead is up to 20. Our weekends begin on Thursday. We call ourselves the Bald Eagles. We call our offense a Georgia Power Company, and that's a terrific name for an offense. And our snap count is rate hike. Forever an icon here in Statesboro until the day he died just over 12 years ago. Irk Russell, they held his funeral here at Paulson Stadium, and Roddy, it drew thousands 
to this building to remember the man that built the foundation for this program. Growing up in the state of Georgia, there's a few coaches that you can't go very far without hearing about. I would say number one on that list is Vince Dooley. Number two is Herb Russell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Evans out across the 35, out to the 40-yard line, trying to provide App State with a spark. Kick off your Week 8 NFL Sunday with ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern. Sam and the guys will have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up to kickoff. And like everything else, it's live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. New quarterback. Jacob Hughesman is the third stringer after Peyton Derrick had come on in relief for the injured Zach Thomas and Roddy by and large Derrick was ineffective and so Scott Satterfield has no other choice but to go a little further on the depth chart. Hughesman appearing in his fourth game has only thrown the football three times this year completed two of them for minus two yards. Looks like those are screen passes or something of the life but they're going to ask Jacob Huser to just hit the open receivers. There were some some things to be had with Pat, with Peyton Derrick in the game. A couple of high throws, a couple of turnovers. I'm hoping to catch lightning in a bottle here. Try to take advantage of some of that speed. This is one of the fastest teams you'll see. Corey Sutton part of that on the receiving end from Huseman. Brinson on the stop. I like that. It looked like it was a half field read. He had the running back out of the backfield going up the sideline and then Corey Sutton behind him wisely decides to take the check down gets enough yardage to make it a third and two saw coach Satterfield there with the hoodie on on this rainy night in Statesboro Georgia 45 year old native of Hillsboro North Carolina trying to will his team back into this football game Darrington Evans on the carry it's going to be close to a first down run Ian Bush with another tackle. That brings us to the end of the third quarter. Still all Eagles 27-7. Statesboro, Georgia having a little bit of fun as we head to the fourth quarter. Home team on top of the 25th ranked. Team from Boone, North Carolina, Appalachian State trying to get back into this football game. They have been undone by an injury to their quarterback, a lot of penalties, turnovers that they don't typically make, and now down to their third string quarterback facing fourth down and in inches at midfield. Huseman hands it off. Evans gets enough for the first down. That might be the best run Darrington Evans has had all game. And it's not going to go down in the stat book as that. But there was penetration from two places on that Georgia Southern defensive line. Just watch the way they move. You see all the guys in the backfield just slides over to the next hole over, makes his way forward, doesn't panic. Great job by Darrington Evans to get that first down. Now he's coming off a tremendous performance, a career high 183 yards rushing on 26 attempts last week. Actually, just five days ago, and the workload continues for big number three. They have been, the coaches, this coaching staff has been really impressed by his ability to shoulder the load. He's going to be asked more and more to do that over the course of this year. And I really feel like this guy has a chance to be special. Uh, you, you watch him on film, his ability to find holes. And then obviously, we haven't seen the home run speed, but it is always there. And this Georgia Southern defense is always aware of it. Flag on the snap. Full start. Offense, number 73. Five yard penalty. Repeat, second down. That was Cole Garrison, season high in penalties now with 11 for Coach Satterfield. And there you see the uh, rushing yardage, just over 100 yards tonight when they come in to this game, top 10 in the country. And you got to tip your hat to this Georgia Southern defense. I mean, especially the defensive line. It's been a strength of this team. They have absolutely performed, freeing up their linebackers, but creating penetration as well. On second and eight play action. That is a first down strike thrown to Corey Sutton. 
from Huseman. So a uh, sustained drive now being put together by the Mountaineers with 1330 remaining. And this is no slight to Peyton Derrick, but this is why Jacob Huseman was brought into this game. His ability to just put the ball where his receivers can make a play. That wasn't a perfect throw. That ball was high and outside. Corey Sutton made a play for him, but we saw a few of those missed early in the game. Jacob Huseman able to get the completion. You can see the confidence growing from this young quarterback. Let's see where he goes now with the first down and 10 at the 36-yard line. Over the middle, catchable ball, and it's intercepted off the deflection. Kendall Vildor with the takeaway. A couple of Eagles lay on the turf, one back at the 15, and another has just gotten up at about the 38-yard line. That's Vildor trotting off as one of his teammates remains on the ground. Another costly mistake for App. For the junior from College Park, Georgia Kindle, Vildor his third interception of the year, sixth of his career, an elite cover corner. Just adds to the total of turnover margin for this elite Georgia Southern defense. A turnover margin like that, and you're going to win some games, especially when you have a ball-hawking defense like this. And they had three picks the last time in uh, November against Louisiana, and what they have done here tonight has turned those turnovers into immediate points time and again Wesley Kennedy with a big run and you know the Eagles offense is looking to tack on to this 20-point lead well, they've gotten points off every single turnover so far and they've scored on their last five drives as well as you see Wesley Kennedy getting on in on some of the action that's what this triple option does to you, you just continue to lean and come at these defensive linemen and come at them and eventually it wears you down and then you bring in the speed back Leslie Kennedy wow and it's it's tough it's tough to keep up with well you ran a similar system at Georgia Tech what was it like to be one of those running backs when you've got the football you know your old line is doing its job you've got the lead and you're running downhill every time you touch it well, well for me it was a little tough because I was a slot back and I knew that we weren't going to pitch the ball when we got a lead like that so I knew I wasn't going to get the ball in, in all seriousness though when you've got a lead and you're, you're this type of offense, it, it provides a sense of calm to the entire team because you know that you are capable when you get, you're getting three yards a carry, three yards a carry, four yards a carry, ten yards. You can feel the just the, the energy of the defense just be sapped every time you're able to grind out three or four more yards. Shy words at quarterback has been outstanding. Hands it off and Kennedy... Nowhere to run that time as Desmond Franklin, the free safety from Inverness, Florida, made the tackle. Safeties are creeping up close for App State, but if you're Wesley Kennedy, this is going to be a learning process for him, moving to that running back position from the slot position. That's one of those when you're second and six and you get the ball, there was enough room there to duck your head in and get maybe two yards to create a third and four. Instead, tries to bounce that out, gets tackled for loss, and it creates a third and nine instead. And Wesley Kennedy is a young man who grew up about an hour from here in Savannah, Georgia. Local guy, knows what this rivalry means. Shy works, able to get down after picking up four. Well, as a team, Georgia Southern has been averaging over five and a half yards per carry so far tonight. They've been effective, they've spread the love, but it's been Shy Wirtz who's been leading the way. That'll bring up fourth down with punter McGill Bowerly from Athens, Georgia comes on out. Shy works 14 carries 131 yards. Fair catch. Ball hits and goes out of bounds at the three-yard line. Every bounce is going the Eagles' when way. things are going your way, they're going your way. And they are clearly going Georgia Southern's way. 20-point lead here in the fourth quarter. On 
on a rainy night in Georgia. We tell you about our Week 8 Monday Night Football matchup with Tom Brady and the Patriots in Buffalo to take on the Bills. 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific on ESPN. Also simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish. And available on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Now get this stat, Roddy. Career wins at New Era Field used to be known, of course, as Ralph Wilson Stadium. If Tom Brady wins this game, he will be all by himself as the third winningest quarterback in the history of that stadium. And again, he doesn't play for the Bills. That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> I actually just updated my fantasy team to put the Patriots defense into play for me against Buffalo Bills offense that's struggling. So I, there you I, think, go. I think I'm in good shape. <laughs> I think you're in very good shape. On first down, App stayed up against it. Thomas Hennigan down at about the seven yard line. Catch there. The ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds. By rule, the ball will be placed at the spot of the fumble. Second down. App State's going to start looking at these balls to see if someone's done something to them. It seems like they can't hold on to it, whether it's in the pass game, the tipped passes that have led to interceptions, the run game, fumbles. It's been tough for App State here today. The give is to Williams. Delivered a big blow at about the 13-yard line. His momentum gets him out to the 16. That'll move the chains. Got Williams with the physical run. Oh, a nice little surge there at the end. Got some help from his tight end, Henry Pearson. Got a little bump, kept him upright, and see if he gets the first down. Third string quarterback Jacob Hughesman. Driven back. Randy Wade Jr., the dog, outside linebacker, taking a bite out of the running back. Huseman does a great job of stepping up in the pocket, avoiding a potential sack from Jay Bowdry. And then he runs into the uh, the dog linebacker, Randy Wade, that's, that's going to, as he got up, probably tell him, hey, man, don't bring that in here. Now, you know where Randy Wade Jr. was born, Roddy? I'll tell you after this play. Out to the 25-yard line. Randy was born in, uh, born in Albany, Georgia. Albany. Al Albany? Albany? Albany. Albany. All right. Yeah. I've, been, I've been taking my lessons from Roddy all day here. You're a lifelong Georgian. Yeah. I've spent the last 30 years living in Albany, New York. So this whole idea of, uh, idea of Albany, Georgia, Trying to figure it out. Injured player will step away while he's treated. Time out on the field for an injured player. Inside that medical tent is Tamarcio Reese, the senior linebacker for Georgia Southern, who was just helped off the field after taking a big shot. So while they tend to him, Chad Lunsford's Georgia Southern Eagles go back to work on defense. Jacob Hughesman at quarterback. Third stringer hands it off. That'll be a first down for Darrington Evans out to the 28 yard line. It's good for App State to be getting these first downs, especially starting back where they did, but they're going to have to start to take some shots down the field. You got to score quicker now if you're going to get back in this game. This Georgia Southern offense has gotten some first downs on the other side. They're chewing up the clock. You're down three scores. You got to take some shots down the field. No question. Clock continues to run under eight minutes. On play action. Screen pass. Caught by Williams, but no chance for yards after the catch because the pitch was a little low. And, and we've seen stuff like that a few times. Throws just a little bit off. And that's where Zach Thomas doesn't miss those throws, the starting quarterback. So even in this situation, where you're down three scores with your starter and you got to feel confident that he delivers it you can get yards after the catch and start to chew away at this field but the backup said you just have to get the completion and starting quarterback injured on the first drive of the night this is the third string qb and he's going to go down hard Well, they were trying to hit Hughesman on the right side with a double move, but Georgia Southern sniffed it out. And then the pursuit by this Georgia Southern defense is able to wrangle Jacob Hughesman. 
Now it's third and ten. Tough spot for the sophomore quarterback. And Jay Bowdry with the big hit. And again, the clock runs, getting close to six and a half minutes to go. The folks here in Statesboro energized on third and long. Timeout. Scott Satterfield is visibly upset. You can see his mouth. You got to get the offense going. The play clock was running down. And when you have a quarterback that doesn't have that experience, there's a lot that we don't talk about that a quarterback has to do. You've got to call the play. Once you get to the line of scrimmage, you've got to make sure everybody's lined up. You've got to check the defense, get your reads. Oh, and by the way, you got to do all that in 40 seconds. And if you don't, your coach has got to call a timeout. Timeout. We'll step away. Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC, freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence and number two Clemson in Tallahassee to take on Florida State. The Tigers have won the last three against the Knowles, and Lawrence has thrown 12 touchdown passes with only two INTs. You can always watch on the ESPN app from anywhere. And number one in blue here tonight in Statesboro, Ellis Richardson will most certainly be rooting for Clemson because he's from a Clemson family. His older brother, Chris, was a defensive end at Clemson back from 2007 to 2010. And their father was part of the 1981 Clemson National Championship team. Another takeaway. Georgia Southern getting close to putting this one away. It's Kendall Vildor's second interception of the half, his fourth of the year, and his seventh of his career. Jacob Huseman gets caught trying to throw the back shoulder throw, but Kendall Vildor up to the task. Georgia Southern's got the ball one more time. App State had thrown four interceptions all season, but up until tonight, Ronnie, they had not faced Georgia Southern, who has gotten them four times just in this one game. Yeah, and the last three drives have all ended in interceptions for the App State Mountaineers. So the Eagles can try and put this thing away. Monteo Garrett, the redshirt senior from Talladega, Alabama. Monteo, a great story that his coaches wanted to tell us about this week leading up to the ball game. He redshirted, then was academically ineligible for two years, but then got his studies right, made Dean's List in the spring of 2017, and then his long-awaited college football debut last fall on pace to graduate. And that's the most important thing. We talk about student athletes, that graduate part, that student part is ultimately the most important thing. So good for Monteo Garrett getting that part right. Right up the middle, Wesley Fields. You know, we have seen when he has come to the sideline, he has gotten onto the uh, stationary bike to keep warm. Again, he was a game time decision about uh, his groin injury. I'm telling you, he has shown no ill effects running the football tonight. Anytime you have those soft tissue injuries, you want to keep them warm. And uh, looks like Wesley Fields has done that. He has been great in his coming back to this team and his, his return and he's a, a really good back and he's going to be a guy that's going to have the ability to play at the next level. On first down. Fields again adding to his totals. He's up over 70 yards now on the night. Well, what a night Shy Words is at. Richard, sophomore quarterback out of Newberry High School, Clinton, South Carolina. Doesn't throw the football much, but when he does, he can make you pay. He's thrown three passes. One of them completed. That one was for a touchdown. But it's been this, the run game, that's been so special. This made to look like a counter-option quarterback run all the way. Great blocking from his teammates. And he's able to finish. Shy Words has been absolutely fantastic. We talked about it coming in. The quarterback position, especially when you have a guy like Sean Wirtz, you have to take that away in an option offense. Georgia Southern's been able to get Wirtz free here today. Yeah, Roddy, you know it's uh, not often as the easiest touchdown of the night is scored by Wesley Fields. Do you need to throw the football when you're Georgia Southern and you can run it like they do? 18 yards for the senior out of America's Sumter High School. And the lead grows to 26. 
You wear down this defensive front enough, you get some cross action in the backfield. Linebackers going one, one way. You seal the defensive line. And Wesley Fields could have taken a stroll in the park to the end zone on that one. Tyler Bass puts his foot into it, kicks it through the uprights. It's 34-7. Well, for Chad Lunsford, this is his second year as head coach at Georgia Southern, but really his first year. He was the interim coach, took over a real tough situation last year when this club was winless. Since taking over, you see he's about to pick up his ninth win against five defeats. Quite a turn of events. They were 0-6 when he took over a year ago. And as you said earlier, he wanted to make football fun again here. He went back to the option. He gave this team an identity. He led his defense. He got a great defensive coordinator, actually, from App State and Scott Sloan, who's instituted that, that attacking three-down lineman defense that has played great here today. And I tell you what, they're going to have a lot of fun in Statesboro. They're not going to be <laughs> shooting champagne at buses after this game. Well, again, this is the first time ever a nationally ranked FBS opponent has come into this building and the home team from Georgia Southern has made it look pretty easy. Everybody's dancing in Statesboro just getting this Thursday night underway. And you know what? I, I wonder how many people are going to call in sick to work in uh, this area tomorrow. Look, we, we talked about student athletes, uh, professors at Georgia Southern. If you're listening, <laughs> let these football players have the day off tomorrow. They've had a late night. They had a big win. And uh, those students, too. I, I, I think there's going to be a lot of call in six. Well, you know, Georgia Southern will keep its unbeaten record in league play intact. And that's probably the most important thing, to keep pace with Troy in the East Division as they try to get their spot into the Sun Belt Conference championship game December 1st. But in the short term, this win on national television against this App State team is likely going to get them more votes and get them some national recognition. Didn't have any votes this week in the AP poll, but they did get some votes in the coaches poll. And I would imagine that when it comes out on Sunday, the Eagles might once again get a little recognition. I think ultimately it's going to really put Georgia Southern on the map. And as you said, in the driver's seat, they have UL Monroe, Georgia Southern does next week. And then it's the big matchup against Troy. You have to think Troy is going to be undefeated in conference going into that game as well. And if they're able to win that with Coastal Carolina, Georgia State, now they're away. They're away to the big rival, Georgia State, at the end of the year. They're away at Coastal Carolina. Those are you know, tricky places to go play, but you got to feel pretty good about your odds to be in the championship game and actually to host the championship game if you're the Eagles. On second down. Huseman keeps the play alive, finds an open man. It's caught by Jalen Virgil out to the 44-yard line. Seventh catch of the year for the sophomore from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Joshua Moon on the tackle after a 13-yard pickup. And for App State, again, they lost their starting quarterback on the first possession of the night, and they are still playing and will be throughout the rest of the season without their all-conference running back, Jalen Moore, who we talked to during the second quarter. So. They're missing some key pieces. Darrington Evans will move the chains again. But a lot of the damage was done because Georgia Southern's been really good, and App State's made a lot of mistakes. Well, they, they, they have made a lot of mistakes, but you have to feel good going forward, or at least not terrible, because that Troy game at the end of the year, you're, you're App State, you're a fan of Troy now. You hope that Troy goes and knocks off Georgia Southern when those two teams play. And then it, make, it it sets up a showdown at the end of the year against Troy. So for all you App State fans out there, go buy you some, some Troy Trojan gear and start to root for the Trojans. That was Marcus Williams Jr. on the carry. Minute 45 remaining. Huseman has it knocked down by Monquavian Brinson. And brings up third down and three yards to go. Well, you know, the party here on campus was clearly underway when you and I got here this afternoon. And I think they're just warming up. This is going to be 
Perhaps the biggest win. I mean, it's the biggest win for Georgia Southern in several years. It's been a long time since they posted a win of this significance, both nationally and also just the fact that, well, they've taken their rival to the woodshed. And, and it's amazing when you're playing meaningful football, the way that a football loving town like Statesboro will put their arms around you. And we had a, a nice crowd here tonight. They were excited, they were loud, and they gave a lot of energy to this Georgia Southern team. And Brad Absher with his first catch for first down. And the rain has been a factor. We have had balls come out. It's been wet, but it's not been terrible, I don't think. It's never really poured. We just had a steady rain. And Georgia Southern has handled it better than App State. Certainly have. And if you're the App State head coach, Scott Satterfield, when you go back to your team, my coach used to tell me, Paul Johnson used to always say, it's never as good or as bad as it seems. So when they turn on the tape, they're going to point to the penalties, particularly in the first half. They're going to point to the turnovers as the reasons that this game got ugly early. We've seen incomplete pass. We've got a flag in the backfield. But th th those things are correctable. Those things are out of the character of this App State team. Losing your quarterback no certainly hurts. The, passer, the defensive player wrapped the quarterback up correctly. Third down. there was whether or not it was a low hit on the quarterback but right at the waist from Logan Hunt taking him down now it's third and 11. He has been over the middle caught and again able to get down inside the 10 yard line clock stops with 40 seconds on the clock to move the chains Well, we had no offense in the first quarter. Second quarter opened up. But by and large, Georgia Southern has led pretty much from the time they scored early in the second quarter on a Darion Anderson 57-yard pass play from Shy Works. And then they turned it back over to the ground game. And this vaunted triple option has done its job for Georgia Southern. As if coach wasn't wetting up already. Does it even bother you when it's raining no. outside no. to take that game right back? But it, I think when you beat your rival, it doesn't bother you anytime. No question. Huseman met at the five yard line. Still fighting with 24, 23. Well, only once before this week in the history of the Sun Belt Conference this will be a 30 second timeout. has one of its teams been nationally ranked. And that was a couple of years ago. Troy wound up playing a Thursday night nationally televised game and getting blown out. And unfortunately for App State, the same thing has played out here tonight. Yeah, and it's, it's unfortunate the way things kind of happen here for App State. It just kind of got away from them early. Obviously, the, the turnovers certainly don't help losing your quarterback, but this is a good football team. And, and this is a football team, like I said earlier, one of the fastest defenses in the entire country. And they honestly played out of character. They hadn't allowed big plays all year. And, and you're talking about playing against teams like, like Arkansas State that's got a high-flying offense, like Penn State, one of the best teams in the Big Ten, and giving up big plays in those games. And in this game against Georgia Southern, the Eagles were able to find a way to capitalize on those turnovers, those big plays after sudden change are absolute backbreakers. And going forward, the big question for the Mountaineers, what will the availability of Zach Thomas be? Incomplete, trying to find Corey Sutton. Thomas took a big hit on the first possession of the night for Appalachian State and has not come back. So on fourth down, the Mountaineers will try one more time to punch it in. Georgia Southern became bowl eligible on Sunday and now looking to really enhance that bowl resume with this one here tonight. Touchdown pass complete to Malik Williams for Jacob Huseman. Four-yard strike, and that'll make it a little 
bit better looking in the box score. An invaluable experience for Huseman. It's a good play design out of the bunch formation, just freeing up the receiver in the end zone, Malik Williams. And it's 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 a good taste in your mouth if you're App State getting a score on the final offensive possession and barely sneaking yeah. the extra point through the, through the upright. The PAT by Chandler Staten was deflected by Monquavi and Brinson, but that bounce went the way of the Mountaineers. But pretty much everything has gone the other way for the Eagles. A spirited contest right from the start. Pre-game, the two teams got in a couple of tussles. We knew coming in emotions would be riding high, and it's been Georgia Southern who has answered the bell. And the task going forward for Chad Munster, the Georgia Southern head coach, is going to be teaching his team how to deal with success. This is a team that won two games a year ago. They've got the hands team in, App State in that bunch formation. You've got to now teach your team how to deal with success because a lot of times that can be harder than dealing with failure. How do you go out and work hard when you're coming off a big win at home against your rival on national television and get ready to play next week? Great job at midfield to secure the victory. And that will do it. Eight seconds are on the clock, and now they're going to get the uh, players back off the field for one final snap. How about Lane Acton landing on that onside kick to make sure that uh, this one is going to go into the win column on the next snap? It's actually a pretty good design by App State. Just kick it right at a guy. You hope it bounces off, takes a favorable bounce, but. Acton doing a good job of fielding it. Chad Lunsford, when he took over the job again, said, let's make football fun again. And for the folks here at Georgia Southern, that is indeed the case tonight. A team that won only twice a year ago improves to 7-1, 4-0 in league play. Here comes the near sideline, and here come the fans at Paulson Stadium. win for this Georgia Southern program. The first win over App State 2014. Since 2014, the first time a ranked opponent has come to Paulson Stadium in the FBS and the Georgia Southern Eagles prevail. You see the excitement from these stands. And I don't know if anybody's going to class tomorrow <laughs> because the party is not going to stop on this field. Yeah, I think it's just warming up. Our rivalry game in the Sun Belt Conference goes to Georgia Southern 34-14 over number 25 App State. The Eagles make a big statement in the league. Final thought? The Eagles did a great job of creating turnovers. Number one team in turnover margin in the entire country. They did it, but bigger. They created some big plays, which is encouraging for the Georgia Southern team. That will do it from Statesboro, Georgia. For Roddy Jones, I'm Doug Sherman. So long. Thanks for watching a Thursday night in the Sun Belt.